What is up? We are going to talk about some transfers that could land for the West Virginia Mountaineer basketball team. My name is Coos. And I'm Mountaineer Paul. And we present to you Hoops from the Hills. What is going on out there, everybody? Uh, we're here today on Easter Sunday to get, bring you this special edition of Hoops from the Hills, kind of an impromptu edition that we did not plan. But considering I'm bored because I've been uh, kind of laid up with COVID for the last few days, and we wanted to get this video out to you guys because there's a lot of transfers or a few transfers that West Virginia could have a shot at in the portal with new coach Darren DeVries. Paul and I want to get on here and talk about a few guys. So, uh, I'll now I'll see why you're holding up the the Gatorade. Thanks to JDK. <laughs> uh, I like that. We should start that over under thing. I'll let you guys bet beforehand. Um, so again, sorry we were late. We actually were on time this time, and as we went to hit record, the StreamYard account we use, the storage was full, so I had to go back and delete a previous video. Seems like every time we every time we are right on the door, finally, finally being on time, something blows up. But anyway, we're here, fashionably late, better late than never, as my mom was all mama used to always say. And we're here. So anyway, I don't want to get sidetracked on that. Paul, uh, there are a few transfers out there that West Virginia is looking at. Right. Uh, who are some of these guys and which ones are we going to talk about today? Well, there's a few. <laughs> you know, uh, it goes from Connor Enright, who's a guy that, that, uh, that was on Drake that um, I don't even think he played this year um, due to an injury or some kind of a eligibility issue, um, all the way to a five-star player. In Omaha, Bill U. Is that how he says it? Bill U or Bill U? That, that, I, I'm not sure. That's how I, I say it that way. But I'm not B-I- sure. That's... Yeah, it's yeah. somewhere in that range. Uh, he's in, he obviously uh, in that Midwest, which is where he's from. He and Tucker DeVries were high school teammates. Tucker was a senior when he was a sophomore. Tucker was a four-star guy. He was a five-star guy. Uh, and, and they had another guy that went to Iowa. So they all stayed right there in the state of Iowa, went to different schools, um, and, and all won a bunch of games, you know, all of them. Even in Iowa, they won some games with Sandal. How, how, his last name starts with the sand. Anyway, Bill you, Bill, you uh, didn't play at Iowa State this past year. I think he realized they're bringing back a lot of good players this coming year. Maybe that style that he, which is really a Bob Huggins similar type, press Virginia style that they were running this year. Uh, maybe not his cup of tea. So he's transferring. Tucker DeVries is already following him on social media. Um, word is that they are in conversation. We'll see what happens. This is a more speculative one here. This isn't, he, hey, he's visiting or nothing yet. He just, I mean, it's been two, three hours ago, guys, that he officially entered the portal. Um, but this is a five-star kid that has a ton of talent. Don't be down because he didn't play on that Iowa State team that was any other year Final Four good. You know, they were really, really good. Most people thought they should have been a one seed this year. It was just been there's some really good teams at the top this year. So, mm-hmm. uh, and some teams that caught fire, just everything. So, I, I really do think any other year they'd be Elite Eight Final Four good. So, he saw there was no path to play time, enter the portal. The, the, the two that I think I'm excited about, uh, only because they have something you can watch and, and di- di- digest, Toby O'Connor is a 6'8 wing out of University of Illinois, Chicago. Uh, he dropped 31 on Drake, played 51 minutes in a triple overtime thriller, uh, six for nine for three-point range. This is an elite. This is what, if you ever played NBA 2K, this is what your typical three and D player. And this is a guy that plays elite defense on the wing, uh, is a really good three-point shooter. But don't don't let me get you twisted here. He, he is for sure an athlete, has all kinds of highlight dunks on his uh, highlight tape. So mm-hmm. he, he's extremely versatile and somebody that's really only scratching the potential of his game. You move on from him to a dynamic playmaking scorer who shot 25 threes and made 25 threes, he didn't shoot that many. He made 25 threes beyond Steph Curry range this year, right? So 
He's a deep three-point specialist. He shot 43% from three guys this year. That's incredible. Top 10 in the country. Jordan Sears is his name. Out of University of Tennessee Martin. We're talking about an upper echelon elite sniper that we just haven't had. That includes Eric Stevenson. He was a great gamer, baller, game day shooting kind of player, but not at the 43 percentile range. And that's really hard to get to. Top 10 is hard to get to. Uh, and he's he's a Joe Toussaint type finisher, guys. He really does get in the lane. He's got a bag of moves that he drops. Uh, he's got a bunch of up and unders, and, and, and he really finishes through contact well. And in a Missouri Valley Conference, it's really tough, you know, or maybe it's an Ohio Valley Conference. Either way, uh, he's a really, really impressive player. Average 21 a game. So lots to be excited about here, guys. These two guys, the last week, the last week we just talked about, are, are supposed to be visiting West Virginia. So there is one more name, but I, I think I want to let Coos talk for a minute here on, on his thoughts on some things. Oh, he looks a little yeah. occupied. Yeah, I'm so my, my computer's going dead here, so I'm going to have to plug up. Bear with me a second, guys. <laughs> okay. Uh, one other player One other player I'll have you guys uh, take a look at, and I have no inside knowledge yet, but Connor Hickman is a player that, uh, out of Bradley, 14 points a game, another 40% three-point shooter, that – Word is West Virginia might be looking at. So check him out as well. He he is a he's also a really athletic player. Excuse me. If you can't tell by the name, he is a white guy <laughs> uh, on that Bradley team. But he is a super good athlete. Uh, another sniper. And, and just remember, guys, the kind of players we're recruiting now are the basic antithesis of what we've seen in years past. Do Bob Huggins? Not that that was the wrong way to do it. It's just a one. 180 degree turn from what we've recruited in the past. You're going to see a lot of long, lanky wing players. I don't know what he's going to do with the big men yet. We're going to have to see. And then our guards are all going to be able to shoot it. So that's the that's the kind of guys he likes to recruit. Yeah, uh, I'm assuming you were talking about the guy from Bradley just now when I had to step away for a second. Yeah, yeah, great player there too. He he and. Uh, he and Spears' games are similar to me, except for Spears is more of a point guard type. From watching, I mean, he's five eleven. And by the way, one thing cool with Spears too is he can guard. He averaged one point three steals a game this year as well for for Tennessee Martin, which I thought was impressive because I always watch. Anytime you see highlights, ninety percent of the time they're only showing their offensive highlights, right? Unless it's a guy who's known for their defense. Uh, so I did want upon doing some research on Spears, I found that he's also he also averaged one point three steals a game. So that tells me. He's a good on-ball defender, and, you know, we've heard Darren DeVries talk multiple times about how, he, you know, he wants to play defense first, and in order to do that, you've got to have guys like Jordan Spears on the court, or Sears, I'm sorry, I keep saying Spears, Jordan Sears. But, yeah, it's – uh, so, yeah, I would definitely be excited to pick him up. And, actually, uh, WV Sports Now has done an article on both Sears and O'Connor because both of those guys – I think Enright has one as well. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. I haven't haven't I haven't <clears> had to pull it up yet, but I will look at the pull up the one on uh, UT Martin uh, Jordan Sears. He says Sears is also considering Alabama in addition to West Virginia. Wait a minute, is it Spears or Sears? Hold on, I believe it's it might be Sears because Bach has it both ways in the article. It has Sears in one sentence, right. and Sears in the next. That, no wonder I was confused. Anyway. <laughs> it's Sears. It's Sears because it's on his Instagram that way. But anyway, it says Sears is also considering Alabama, Arizona State, LSU, South Carolina, and Texas Tech, in addition to West Virginia. So that's his final six. It's an odd mix. He's five foot eleven, averaged twenty one point six a game, four point six rebounds, four point five assists, and one point three steals in thirty two games. He does it Skyhawks. all. Yep. During his junior season, Sears, an Ormond Beach, Florida native, shot forty three percent from the field. 43% from three and 84% from the free throw line. Sears was named to the all Ohio Valley conference first team. The last two seasons while at UT Martin He yeah. started his career at Gardner Webb played there for a couple of years. So he only has one year of eligibility remaining. Right. Um, and then, Which is another point, right? 
Yep. Sorry. He can talk about getting old, older, right? We need to get older. <clears throat> right. You want to, and you want a good mix. I mean, you, you want some younger guys to help build the program, but you need some veterans as well. I mean, you, and I'm sure DeVries knows that. Uh, now, Toby O'Connor, uh, also planning to come on a visit from the University of Illinois, Chicago. And Paul, I was, when I was doing research on this guy, did he also play at Duquesne? He did, yes. One time. So he's familiar yes. with the area somewhat. <clears throat> but yeah. he says UIC wing Toby O'Connor will be visiting West Virginia from April 12th to 14th. He tells Joe Tipton of On Three Sports. O'Connor is also visiting St. Bonaventure and LSU throughout the next few weeks. That's a that's a that's talking about an odd mixture. Mm-hmm. UIC wing Toby O'Connor is it all oh, that's that's uh Joe Tipton's write up. But Ethan goes on to say O'Connor, who's six foot eight. Average eleven point one points, six point eight rebounds, one point nine assists, one point five steals. Again, another guy who's averaging more than a steal a game, and two blocks through thirty three games. O'Connor shot thirty nine percent from the field, thirty two percent from three, and fifty seven percent from the foul lines. Not a good. He's got, he can a lot to improve on, and, and he's oh, yeah. young still. Well, he's not young, young, but he's still. I think he has two years left, doesn't he? According to the article, it's one, but I. But again, maybe it I, is only one. But I haven't done that a whole lot of research. It says the Orange, New Jersey native entered the transfer portal while considering the NBA draft. And he has one year of eligibility remaining. West well, you got to be informed. Scheduled for Drake guard Connor Enright at some time next week. Yes. Enright, six foot, average 6.9 points, 3.2 rebounds, 2.2 assists, and a steal in 33 starts for the Bulldogs. He shot 44% from three and had multiple games with four or more three pointers. What was that he percentage? Has, he, 44% from three. It's so good. <laughs> and he, so has two good. Years, he has two years of eligibility. That's probably where you got that from or where you saw that. Well, one of the players they had, they they had one player that didn't play at all last year that was supposed to be one of their best players. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he and you know, it just went in the portal whenever DeVries left. So I thought maybe it was in a, uh, maybe his name was Andy or Andrew. I don't remember now. They do have another player, but I don't think we're pursuing him. Uh, at least I haven't seen anything about it yet. Game Chalk Chuck says they're looking at Sears as well. Yep. It's going to be interesting about to see where he goes. I'm assuming money is probably the same for all those programs or similar in basketball. Yeah. Sorry, I just saw a weird comment. I didn't I, – I, I, it threw me off. Anyway um, – before we get too much further along, we got to do we got to pay the bills here. So bear with us for oh yeah about forty seconds. Ethan Roberts. This episode of Hoops from the Hills is brought to you by Dutch Miller Automotive, where friends and family pricing means you get the best deal right up front on any new or pre loved vehicle in stock every time. With brands like Chevrolet, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Kia, Hyundai, Ford, GMC, Buick, and Subaru. The Dutch Miller Automotive family is always growing and ready to put you in the car or truck you've been searching for. Check out our inventory across West Virginia at DutchMillerAuto.com, or you can come in person today to the home of friends and family pricing, only at a Dutch Miller Automotive store near you. Thank you for that, guys. Thank you for being patient. Always have to pay the bills. You did check them out. That's awesome. I'm glad to hear that. Need to, screen, need to screenshot that one. <laughs> yeah, here, let me get a screenshot. I'll try. There we go. It's done. Uh, yeah, I got one as well. Who's Ethan Roberts? I missed that. As before. We oh, he's the player. The, yeah, he's the guy that, that I was talking about who I thought that I was confusing him with Connor and Wright. I got you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. They're they're both. Uh, I don't know. They're similar names to me. You right. know. I, I see. <laughs> uh, I think there's just but, uh, very nice inventory and nice folks. Yes, they do. They're good people. But anyway, um, back to the players. I, I really. You know, in full disclosure, I haven't done as much digging as Paul has on this, but I really, really like Jordan Sears' game. And we need a guy that can play the point guard position because there's a good chance Kirk Reese is not going to stay. We don't know that for sure yet. 
but there's a good chance he's not going to stay, and we they need somebody that can replace him at the point spot, and I think he can do that. Um, and obviously, you know, with Bill Yu, even though he didn't play a whole lot at Iowa State, in the interview I read, he, he actually said that his expectations weren't that high anyway. He didn't expect to play that much in year one, for, you know, despite what people may have said. So it sounds like he's a young man who understands, you know, making it going all the way from high school to power five. It was going to be a straight, it was going to be a jump, right? And he may, yeah. may have had some work to do to get ready for that. Sounds like he understood that. Why would he enter the portal, though? I'm not sure. Maybe it's a playing time thing, or maybe he sees an opportunity to stay at the power five level and play with his old high school teammate at the same time. That's what I'm hoping. Possible. But it's very know, possible. There have been some fans I, I'm on some chat in some um, group chats with who don't seem real high on this kid. But he was a, he wasn't a five star recruit for nothing, you know. Yeah. They don't they don't uh, you know five McDonald's All Americans don't fall out of the sky. Yeah. So no, we got a don't. chance to get a five if we there's a chance to get a McDonald's All American on at West Virginia. I think it's worth the risk. Just my opinion, especially if he personally knows already knows. You're arguably your top player and your coach. That's the thing. They they are already a personal relationship here at some level. Right. I don't know how how deep it goes. Uh, obviously, with Tucker DeVries, it's it's probably pretty deep. You want a state championship with somebody that's pretty lifelong memory. Uh, I would imagine Derek DeVries was very deep, probably trying to recruit that kid to Drake. You know, along with Tucker. Uh, hey, look what we'll go. We can do with this mid major. Freak everybody out. We get a four and a five star recruit. But uh, and then they also had another really good player that went to Iowa that I think is uh, the rumblings about him too. But uh, anyway, I, I, you know, all I know is that Tucker's trying to recruit him. <laughs> you know, I do know that. So yeah, uh, we'll see. You know, I think it, it would be enticing. Uh, and, and being that he didn't have a splash year with Iowa State, you would think that he's probably obtainable. Rather than if he averaged 12 points a game in his first year, or, you know, whatever, you know, had a good year, probably everybody and their mom would want him and it'd be like trying to pull your hair out to get him. So might be able to get him for the cheap here uh, as far as not having to fight all teams, not money-wise. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and here's the thing, I, you know, athletically, this kid is at a different level than almost anybody, probably even at Iowa State now. Athletically, that doesn't mean he can put the ball in the hoop consistently yet or anything like that. But what can you do with an athlete? They can certainly play defense. Does he have length? Yes, he does. So at the very least, you think DeVries, who's a master, master motivator from what I've read. And I've listened. I've dove, dove way deep into him, uh, gone back all the way to Creighton, looked at Creighton, to, you know, asked about – I've tried to ask some Creighton players. And I mean, I've really went deep on it. He, he's a master motivator. He can get his kids to play for him. So I think he's really good at getting kids to play hard on both ends. So I think having a kid like that that's developing offensively probably would be an asset defensively. Yeah. McDonald's all Americans, like you said, don't fall out of the sky. Right. Um, Daniel Gigax or Gigax, I think it's Gigax, says the football team has a general manager, does a basketball team also, not in the same mold. Uh, I mean, they used to have Jay Koontz, who was the director of player personnel and recruiting. But his job was more managing the portal. Uh, Get the players. Trying to go find players and handle handle recruits, portal recruits. Whereas the GM at the, on the football team, his, he's more of a scout role. Like he's scouting players. I mean, they're similar, but his job isn't to go get them. It's just to scout them, basically. You know, he's scouting from a talent perspective where Jay is not only scouting them, he's also trying to get them there and get them, get them on, you know, on board. So a little different. Um, I, I don't know what DeVries' plan is from a, from, from a um, staffing standpoint. I'm sure he'll probably have somebody on staff to do that. I think in today's college basketball, it's probably pretty common practice, but we'll see. To have some, you know, and how, how they'll manage that, who knows? Uh, 
Right. Thank you, Daniel. I've heard other people say your name differently, and I, I just always wondered if I was getting it right or not. So thanks for for setting me straight on that. Giggity. Uh, Cody, I would say yes, uh, because guys are going to start getting in. Average Cody asked, do you think starting this week they will start talking to transfers more? Yes, because they will start getting more guys on campus probably. So, yeah, I think that's – now that they have the coach in place, they probably will start getting guys to campus and having those conversations more frequently. Well, and we're waiting on the resolution of the Jake, the Drake job too, right? Are they going to promote Marty Richter, who has been uh, – Darren DeVries' right hand, right hand man for so long, uh-huh. or 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 is he going to come along with him? It's one of the two. You know, he's not staying at Drake if he's not the head coach. We know that. The thing, the thing, I I think he probably won't be because there's no leverage for him to unless he's just a great coach and they think he's the best for the job. Outside of that, all the players transfer, so it's not like he, he's going to keep all the players there. So, and from what I understand, the most people think he's going to come to West Virginia, and the play some some of the players are going to follow him there. We'll see. You know, we've seen Overton uh, repost something about that, uh, and some other people as well. Right. Um, I was trying to find a write up on Omaha Bill U as you were talking, but I haven't. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. I found one earlier that I like, but I haven't. You know how it is. You find one, and then I didn't know I was going to need it. And then now I don't know where I, I don't remember where I found it at. Well, Bill, here's one. Here's one from my Bleacher Report. It says, "Former five-star recruit forward Omaha Billy U plans to enter the transfer portal after one season with Iowa State, according to the Athletics' Tobias Bass. Bill U was the number thirteen recruit of the 2023 basketball class, according to 24/7 Sports. He made 20 appearances off the bench for Iowa State his freshman season." Averaging 2.4 points and 1.3 rebounds in fewer than eight minutes per game. The six foot eight forward was the first five star prospect to commit to Iowa State since at least 2007, according to ESPN's Jeff Borzello and Paul Biancardi. He also had offers from Nebraska, Arkansas, Georgia, Illinois, Iowa, Kansas, Michigan, Oklahoma State, Tennessee, Texas Tech, Western Kentucky, Kentucky, Memphis, Morehead State, South Dakota State, and TCU, as well as the G League Ignite. Per Barzello and Bian- Biancardi. The decision to commit to Iowa State hinged in part on his desire to play in his home state. Billy previously played at Waukee High School in Waukee, Iowa, where he helped lead his team to the state championship his sophomore year on a court located a 45 minute drive from Iowa State. And there's actually a highlight which I'm not going to play due to copyright reasons uh, that Paul actually sent me earlier. Someone named Sean Bach over 24 7. There's a video of Tucker DeVries. Throwing an alley oop to Omaha Bill U for a slam dunk. Pretty cool. Yep. Uh, says, although Bill U averaged more than 22 points and almost 10 rebounds per game his final season of high school basketball, he was never able to find similar success at Iowa State. After he was held to 5.2 points and 2.6 rebounds per game while averaging 15 minutes on the court in his first five outings with the Cyclones, Bill U's playing time dropped. Precipitously, he only played more than 10 minutes in a game twice more that season. His best outing came on November 19th in his fourth outing with Iowa State when he recorded 14 points and three rebounds and a 55-point blowout win over Grambling. Tucker DeVries, who who played alongside Bill U. Waukee, entered the transfer portal to lead Drake for West Virginia last week in the footsteps of his father, Darren DeVries, who left the head coaching position at Drake to head coach at West Virginia a week prior. Given their high school connection, all eyes will be on Bill U in the transfer portal to see if he follows DeVries to Morgantown. So good stuff there from Bleacher Report. Mr. or sorry, Mrs. Julia Stumball. All right. So if you guys get a chance, go uh, check out that highlight. Pretty cool. So I wanted to answer a question. After we answer the super chat here, buddy. Yep. Thank you, Kenny Evans, for the five dollar super chat. It says, "Happy to get this season over and hugs era over. Looking for great things for WVU in basketball and football. Both. It's been a while, Kenny, buddy. First off, 
Thank you very much for the super chat. It's very much appreciated. As for the uh, what you're saying, I, I absolutely agree, man. Uh, it's an exciting time to be a Mountaineer fan again, even though DeVries hasn't coached a game in Morgantown yet. There's a lot of positivity around his hiring, a lot of hype, especially with Tucker coming over to help kickstart things in, in the in the new era. Uh, a lot of positive vibes going around Morgantown. And with the football success, a lot of positive news coming out of spring camp. You know, I don't know about you guys, but I'm choosing to be optimistic going into the next season of, of Mountaineer Sports. Yep. What about you, Paul? <laughs> we deserve it. We deserve it, you know. Um, let's see. Happy to get this season. I was I was all th- I think and thought I didn't even read it. Happy to get the season over. Hugs there over and looking for great things for WU being my football books. I get where you're coming from, Kenny. Uh, I think I said as much to um, Jared DeVries on the show here last the other day. He was, you know, I, I was talking to him. I said, I hope there's a place for hugs somewhere, you know, eventually, as long as it doesn't interfere with what Coach DeVries does, you know. Um, Outside of that, you know, but uh, I am ready to move forward as well. And, you know, I, I'm excited. <laughs> I really am excited, man. It, it, it's an exciting time as a content creator, as a, as a West Virginia fan. Uh, somebody was asking about Sharon Young on back here. And uh, I don't know how far back this is. Coons, yeah, I saw that too. There it is. Chaz. Hey, Chaz. Um, I did do a little bit of digging in this for you. Here's what I can say. The old regime that was here, Hubs and crew, were not interested in a Morgantown high product, unfortunately. Uh, they didn't recruit West Virginia very often, unfortunately, um, unless it was a big-time player at the prep schools or whatever. I do, however, think this is a kid that would fit in a, in a DeVry system. Um, I, I, I reached out to sources and asked if, that, that they, if they thought there would be a change uh, this late in the game it, it's po- you know it's, it is possible but they would have to come strong with it you know uh, and he may be happy at Akron listen Akron has won a lot of basketball games at the division one level lately he may want to develop their year where he gets playing time and, you know in this day and age it's about playing because if you can play somewhere like that as a freshman to light it up you can easily transfer right and move on up so the way kids like this kid get recruited are, are way different than they used to be. That's why you see guys like this this uh, Sears kid or Spears. Was it Spears or Sears? Cause it's Sears. Sears. Well, it's a Sears guy. You know, like, even though he's had to work his way up and through, in the past, he was probably talented enough to sit behind somebody on a Power 5 roster for a few years. So you just never know. And, and Sharon Young, while he's dynamic, he's played four state championship games. You know, he's the Gatorade player of the year in the state. He averaged 21 points a game. Uh, certainly can fill it up. Averaged so many triple doubles as a guard, which is amazing. Um, I think he's a fit for what DeVries does. But they're so focused on he just got here. You know, it's just this is probably a whirlwind. I'd say give it a few weeks and see. I'll, I've tried. I'll try and reach out to Sharon myself and see if I can't figure something out there. But at the end of the day, it's kind of like in bad taste for me to say, "Hey, <laughs> you know, are you thinking about decommitting here from Akron?" You know, so um, I'd have to think about it, think of a way to to try to see if he's okay with the breeze and all that. They'd be asking how he feels about the new hire or something, but we'll figure it out. Kenny with another two dollar super chat. He says maybe the SEC will want us now if we do great. Hey, man. <laughs> I don't rule it out in the future, but uh, I'm not. Or the Big Ten, either one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. He is going to Akron, Chaz. Um, I haven't seen. Irval's asking about former players commenting on the Devries hire. I haven't seen any. I don't think. Have you, Paul? Well, it's it's hugs. You know, it's a listen. This is all these coaches that are just got fired are people that these kids. Grew up knowing, have come back and known over the years. Deshaun Butler's a university legend. 
Jordan McCain to an extent is a legend, uh, especially based off his social media profile, which I usually always bring up. But it's it's because it's several hundred thousand people. <laughs> He's got a huge profile on social media. Um, uh, all the way to you know, you go back and, and just, there's just uh, there's so much that's sad about it, you know, including Jay, who, who's been here for years. Um, so I think there's just some. It's one of those things where you probably do feel good about Coach DeVries getting the job, but it, at the same time, it's like you feel worse for Hugs, you know, probably especially if you came through and Hugs was your coach, uh, which was basically everybody, <laughs> you know, recently. Yeah. Um, Is that how you see it? Or? Yeah, to a degree, yes, but I, I don't – there's probably a few that are a little bit skeptical about it because of the hug stain or not skeptical. That's the wrong word. Cautious about saying yeah. anything, even though, even if they have an opinion, they may want to, may want to keep it positive, you know, or, or just keep, yeah. keep quiet. Um, and probably just, you know, kind of watch from far, from afar to see how it goes. And, and I'm sure they all want what's best for the program at the end of the day. You know, most people out there are mature enough to separate, uh, to want to to want the best for both the university and Bob Huggins, both. You know, you you don't. It doesn't right. have to be one or the other here. <laughs> and I think most of the players are probably in that camp. I mean, they did Correct. represent the state and the university for four years or whatever. Um, Eric, the the fish fry is actually still happening this year. I think they're doing it in Charleston, maybe. Uh, and the money's going to a hospital in Charleston, I think. I'm not 100%. But, yeah, the, fi the fish fry was a completely separate event from the school. So his fish fry is not going anywhere. That's That was a totally separate deal. The school had nothing to do with that. I'm not sure what happened to Paul, guys. I'm sure he'll be back on in a second. I saw a comment up here about Press Virginia. Um, I, are you talking about? the press Virginia for the women's team, Eric, because the men's, this new men's coach doesn't run a press defense. He runs a more of a pack line man type defense. I don't know. What happens. I don't know. <laughs> that was weird. It just kicked me off. But yeah, I was, somebody was asking about the, Eric was asking about the Huggins fish fry. You know, that was a completely separate entity from the, from the school anyway. You know, that was, that had nothing to do with him and his job as a coach. That was something he did for his charity, the Norman May Huggins Foundation. And he's still doing it. He's not going to stop doing it. Why well, uh, nor should he? Yeah. And uh by the way, uh you guys probably figured it out, but I did delete some comments that were earlier in the chat about some people coming here. Um uh, took exception to us doing this show today, I guess. So I, anyway, I deleted it. In what uh, way? Because it being Easter Sunday. Yeah, but that's making an assumption that we're even Christian, which I'm not saying we aren't. I'm just saying that's an assumption. I mean, I, I'm I'm openly a Christian, but I I don't have a. I don't think this impacts my ability to serve God in any way. Right. But anyway, I just wanted people to know that I was looking out for the chat and. Got that out of there. Yeah, yeah. Um what do you mean, Timmy? I'm just curious what do you mean by McCabe sucked? That kind of caught me there, Coos. Oh yeah. Uh on, on the floor he wasn't, you know, he, he was underwhelming what happened, but uh as a coach, he's looked at as a huge star in the making, as a matter of fact. Like there's he he let me just say this, he's gonna get a shot at a head coach and job at a young age, probably. He's on that track. Think about all he's experienced as a coach already. <laughs> and he's not even he's not even twenty five. Yeah. Yeah, he uh and I don't think he sucked. I'm just not sure. I'm not sure he was a fit at West Virginia. Not in a big well. I'm not sure. I don't know what happened there, uh, but I'll always have a lot of respect for Jordan McCabe, the way he handled himself, the way he handled his transfer. He handled everything with maturity, with class. He never complained. 
He never bashed anybody. He's he still considers West Virginia his home. Um, so I mean, I you know I'm sure he does UNLV too, but still, but nonetheless, I mean, he came back to coach. So uh, yeah, I think saying he sucked was a little bit little bit uh unnecessary, just my opinion. Right. Nick's Nick brings up a great point. He brought a ton of exposure to the program. Absolutely. He Jordan McKay was pretty famous on you on, on the internet, man. Uh, yeah, that's brought, true. He had a Tavon Austin esque highlight tape. <laughs> Not as good as Tavon's, but there was a lot of people that seen it. Yeah. Anthony Perry's asking yeah. about Toby O'Connor, uh Paul. He says he don't think yeah. he's a big twelve caliber player. In what way, brother? Or, or I'm sorry, Big Twelve caliber starter. Does he be more? Well, who, player. who said he would start? I mean, look, he's an elite defender. You get what I'm saying? Not all five starters have to be able to score at the Big Twelve level. But but if you go watch that Drake game, look, he's got a lot of talent. You know, he, he shot six for nine from three and put up 31 on Drake. And that's a team that took Washington State to the brink in the in the. Uh, Tournament. Certainly, he has some things to that he could work on and be better at. I'm not disagreeing with you totally here, but as a defender, we need him in the lineup. It just depends on who we get. At this point in time, he has to start right because he's one of the first couple players that we don't even have him yet. But it looks like we've got a good shot. Let Coach DeVries build this team, and then we'll talk about where he should or shouldn't be. Anthony, I, I get where you're coming from, but uh, he's six eight, man, and it's hard to teach six eight. It's hard to teach that length. So, all five starters don't have to be able to score. though, is what I was getting at, you know. Yeah, uh, guys, just a reminder: if you want to make sure your chat gets gets seen, because we were, you know, we're not, we're not able to answer every comment. If you want to make sure yours gets highlighted, you can drop a super chat. It's also a way to support what we do here. Helps keep the lights on. Helps pay the bills. Um, what was Huggins' win loss record in the Big Twelve? I don't know his overall record, Stephen, but it wasn't great. Let's be honest; the last five years, especially, wasn't great. So, you know, he had struggled the last few years. Now, the thought was he was, you know, he he had been braced the portal. They they had more NIL backing, things like that. So things seemed to be turning. Would it, you know, would it, would he have turned it? I, who knows? I mean, we don't know. Um, because of what happened. Uh, back to back to Jordan McCabe. C. Sands says, saying he is up and coming coach that people that be head coach early is just homerism. He coached one year on the worst team in WVU history, and you guys somehow saw a future coaching star. Well, it's been pretty much documented that he's responsible for uh, – some highly touted recruits being interested in coming to West Virginia potentially because he connected well with with recruits. I mean, recruiting is half of coaching. So, and do you think Josh Eilert would have brought him onto the staff if he thought he was a bad coach? Give me a break. At the end of the day, Jordan McCabe was the youngest, you're the youngest assistant coach in college basketball this year. So, at 25 years old. There are more than one people that I know behind the scenes and, and, and outwardly say that he is on the fast track to becoming a coach. I didn't say when he was going to be a coach. I just said he was going to be a coach young. And I believe that. So, uh, you know, we can just, we can, we can agree to disagree on it. But at the same, at the same time, you don't get that promotion. Most people have to, have to, uh, go through the ringer, you know, whether it be the video coordinating room or wherever you got to do. Most of you don't transition right into a coaching role, coaching role. And it's because when he actually played the sport, it was pretty obvious that he was physically limited, especially in the big 12, but was an excellent coach on the floor. People saw that for what it was, got him to get into coaching. And that's why he is where he is now. Yeah. It's not a, it's not a, like a huge stretch. Matt Thornsbury, who's watching over on X. Thank you, Matt. Matt also does some writing for me over at Corner.com. Matt says that Huggins' record was 36 and 52 or somewhere around that. Thank you, Matt, for chiming in with that. 
I had a number similar to that in my head, but I wasn't sure, so I didn't want to. I didn't want to misspeak. Um, Nick says I'm not a Huggins homer, but if we would have kept Toussaint and Perez, this team would have at least made the tournament. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the two players would have made that much difference, but um, that's fair to say, I guess. Right. Oh, uh, and one other little quick point on the yep. cave thing. Uh, if you if you if if you don't want homerism, it's probably not the channel for you. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, it, it's called Hoops from the Hills, uh, and you can look. I mean. His background says fan West Virginia fan cave, and mine says number one WVU fan. So we do have a tendency to look. We try to be op, we try to be uh, objective, but you know, but we also don't hide the fact that we're West Virginia fans either. Right. So there are times we may come come at things from a golden blue glasses on. We don't, and we don't hide that. That's what makes us unique, right? You can get objective journalism or whatever you want to call it anywhere. Um, Josh says, I think WVU needs to get back to recruiting more hardworking players, such as Gabe, Joe Toussaint, and Keaty Johnson, guys who didn't care about personal success, but the team always came first with them. Yeah, and I think I think based on what I've read and heard about Coach DeVries, I think he will recruit guys like that. Again, time will tell, but that's, that's my – it's one reason I like him so much. I think he has that same toughness, physicality. I mean, look at his family. For Paul did a great interview with here on the channel the other day on Friday. The day I was felt like I'd been hit by a dump truck, I wasn't able to join him. But he did a great interview with uh, Jared Devries, Coach Devries' brother, who's a freaking twelve-year veteran in the NFL. He grew up in a family of football players. Man, they're tough. They're gritty. They're hard-nosed. He's got that same DNA in him. And that's the kind of players he recruits. And I think that's yeah. one of the reasons he's going to fit at West Virginia. But anyway, that's, and, and that's my opinion. That's a great point. It's a great point. Thanks for shouting that out. Um, one thing he brought up on there was, and he and this was Jared DeVries saying this, Coach Jared DeVries will not bring in somebody that disrupts culture. So uh, the word culture probably gets turned around a too lot. Too too much in the uh, too lot, too much in this day and age. Uh, it does get brought up a lot, right? It's like overused in a way. But 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 basically, what he wants is the type of player that he likes and wants. And basically, if you're not that, you're not going to come in. You know, there are some some coaches that make concessions if you're talented enough, right? Yeah. They'll take on a, a knucklehead. Well, this is not Darren DeVries. So, Randy Moss was not like, like you know, that situation probably wouldn't have been Randy Moss. He would probably would have brought him in. You know? Which isn't, you know, and sometimes that may not always be the right call, but that's that's the way he operates. It's all it's all going to be high character. Uh, you know, like you said in his, in his uh, monologue, he said, you stack talent and intangibles enough times. So, Intangibles right. is a big deal. Yep, yeah. absolutely. Uh, Charles Peterson made a comment here. I don't know what Charles is referring to. Apparently, there's some news I missed. Very nice of Ren to send all the former coaches to the Final Four. Lots of opportunities to get work. Oh, yeah. Right. That's Did a great that? point. I didn't know. I, I went right by me today, but it's. It's a holiday. Huh. Interesting. Where do you uh, see that at, Charles? I'd love to read that, man. I'm not saying I don't believe you. I just like to read it. If there's an article on it somewhere. Got another super chat. Thank you to Earval for the 999 super chat. By the way, Earval, I love your uh, profile photo, and I actually have that same shirt in my closet, except mine's the gold version with the blue lettering. But Earval says, I loved hearing your during DeVries speech that he spoke with all – three prior head coaches that included hugs regardless at the end of the day, he still wants the best for this university and state. Very true. Thank you. Irval for the super chat. Appreciate the support for helping us pay the bills. 
I, yeah, I love that too. You know, um, he, I think he even spoke with Catlett, <laughs> which is pretty cool. He did say he was only able to text text with some of them. I wonder who that was he was only to text with. Um, but, I'm not sure. But, you know, the McDermott thing is probably plays a large factor in the ability to communicate with hugs. Uh, I mean, that they're such close friends, which honestly, I didn't know that, but it's not a shock, you know. Um, so hopefully that he was able to, I'm sure he's got the lay in the land and, and John Beeline is pretty cool how instrumental he was in helping two coaches get jobs this time around. Um, sorry, I got sidetracked by the comments. I get, I read the comments and I can't hit, listen to you at the same time. <laughs> you know me, man, you know, how my brain works. I can't yeah. do two things at once. So I apologize when I, there's, if there's a moment of silence is because Kuz is, his brain's done with somewhere else. Um, oh, I, I know what I was going to say. Here's what I was going to say about that. To me, it speaks highly of DeVries because, you know, that couldn't have been about the coach, you know, contacting three coaches. It couldn't have been an easy conversation because he, I'm sure he sees and hears all the stuff going on about Huggins. And for him to still reach out to him, to me, speaks volumes of him as a man, you know, and I, I yeah. respect that. So even though this comments is is oh oh sorry I didn't, changed what, it sorry which uh, one was it it's all right the Jacob Yoho comment would everyone crap their pants to be hired tubs and assistant that's funny right but what did I tell you the other day I thought he should actually think about doing remember hiring Josh Eiler I, I think he should really consider hiring Josh Eiler uh, I still believe Josh Eiler's a really good assistant coach I don't know. Nobody can succeed in this job this year, guys. I, I mean, I'm just sorry to say, you know, we never he, – he was snake bit from the beginning, and there was just no way he was going to win. You know, maybe he could have got two or three more wins if he had done something different. But I, I'm sorry. I'm talking he was truly screwed. And they said he did such a good job that, that apparently he's going to have a job in in the back of the house where the ADs and stuff are uh, is, is what – most people are saying right now. So I, I think if I'm coach degrees, I, I, I seriously consider possibly hiring Josh Island, you know, just as an assistant. Uh, I mean, he knows the area. You got to have somebody that is bridging the gaps to this area, especially to some of the recruiting areas around here. I'm just curious who's going to do that for him because I was far, it's not close to here really. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, you can recruit where you're used to recruiting, sure. But there are natural recruiting areas for West Virginia, whether it be Ohio, Virginia, Washington, D.C. area, you know, places like that that I don't know, Pennsylvania, I don't, that I don't know if Coach DeBree, I'm sure he has a plan, guys. I'm not saying he don't. But I do think Josh Shallot would be a good candidate for that. Yeah, the only thing you and I have heard from an anonymous source that there's a chance nobody from a that is attached to Bob Huggins will be a coach on his staff. True. Right. That's the only problem so, with it. Yeah. So I, I don't, I don't, I love your idea. I just don't know that it's a realistic expectation because of unfortunate circumstances that is not a fault of any of these people is, is, is the problem. Um, yeah. There was a comment I was going to bring up. Um, Oh, Scott Fisher said that three guys reported that he was sending the entire staff to the Final Four. That that right there, to me, shows the kind of person Rand Baker is. Maybe yeah. maybe that's normal. I don't know. Maybe that's normal. Um, but it's you know I'm sure they're doing it on the university's dime, which they should. And. Right. Uh, It'll give these guys Absolutely. a great chance to network with people, get to know people. Gives people like Jordan McCabe that we talked about, Deshaun Butler, that don't have a lot of coaching experience, the chance to prove themselves, prove how intelligent they are when it comes to the game, recruiting, all that kind of stuff. I think that's a wonderful idea. Yeah, uh, it's, it's a, a great idea. Gesture. I completely agree. It's actually almost video worthy. <laughs> you know, That's how cool it is. 
Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. I would like to see of you go after the center Garrison from Oklahoma State. Three years left of eligibility, which is a plus. Great comment, Josh. Appreciate it, man. Thanks, Josh. Everybody, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and the subscribe button if you haven't yet. Greg wants to know if Josh did get retained, what function would he hold? Yeah, like I said, it, it would probably just be – it would be, you know, some kind of recruiting. If I if it were up to me, um, probably it would be, you know, helping Coach DeBreeze. His, his main function would be helping him get used to – he spent 17 years here. He probably knows every short coat. He probably knows every head coach within 100 miles. Forging those relationships with people that – Coach DeBreeze doesn't have yet, right? I, I don't know how hard it is, but I assume having somebody, an ambassador on your side to meet these people a little bit better, you know, so that, you know, who better than Josh to tell this coach what a good guy DeBreeze is or whatever, uh, or, or tell, or at least, you know, here's how you get here, just little things. Uh, somebody's got to be around to help with that, you know? I mean, it seems like it'd be a heck of a thing to learn on your own. You know, maybe like special assistant to head coach or something like that. I don't something. Know. And you I'm sure they have a plan, you, to, you know. Man. Yeah. Yeah. You could give him whatever title you wanted. Curtis says he would hate to lose Jay to Louisville. Well, I mean, none of us want to lose Jay. But at the end of the day, I just want him to find a job, to be honest with you. Yeah. You know, I think Louisville would be a good a good spot for him. Um, hopefully, hopefully West Virginia can keep him. That's, that's the ultimate hope. But. Josh wants to know our personal favorite target in the portal. Uh, that we're targeting or just in general? He didn't specify. Is that, okay. Uh, well, if it's. You sounded like me. My what? My. Uh, what, needing, needing specifics. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, if it's. Just anybody. That's that's there's so many out there. I, I would probably go with the center from Yale. I, I think he's a big seven footer. You've seen what uh, Ben, whatever his last name is. Uh, I watched a lot of his tape today. He's just so fleet of foot for a guy his size. Uh, you've seen what Zach Eady's done in the tournament this year. If you've got a mismatch at the five like that, he's either going to get fouled or he's going to make the shot. Or, you know, or a guy like this can shoot, actually shoot it a little bit, too. Um, you can run your offense through him, you know, and, and, and you can still run, you know, a five out and one in or four, four out and one in all day long with, with a guy like that. So he'd be my overall favorite that we're targeting. Gosh, it's hard not to fall in love with, with uh, Sears, you know. Yeah. I mean, it really is. Yeah, of the of the targets, he's probably my favorite off the top. I mean, other than Tucker DeVries, obviously, which we've already got. He, he made he made twenty five threes this year, from from beyond twenty five uh -huh. feet. Yeah, we're talking about to the logos. <laughs> like, it, go watch his highlight film, guys. He he seriously has really a limited range, and if you go under the screen on him, there there's a basketball. Any, what? Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. As an any shot top ten in the country as far as percentage goes. So yeah, I mean it's hard not to fall in love with that. What is the name of that site that uh, all these? It's it's the basketball scout or the scout. So uh, so they can go what, look at these highlights of these people. Oh, uh, it's a YouTube channel. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, hold on, I'll tell you just one second. Uh, college basketball scouting. Okay, yeah, it has highlights of most of these guys, and uh, you can go see them. See the highlights. I, I recommend you guys do that once this is over with. Yep. Yep. College oh, basketball have, scouting. 
Yeah, they definitely need a big. Several people mentioned the bigs. Yeah, they definitely need to get him a big. Uh, yeah, for sure, for sure. Because Edwards is a big loss. They really need a couple bigs, to be honest. Because you, you need at least two. That way, if one gets in foul trouble, you got another one. Preferably three, but it's it's not not that common to have three bigs on a team nowadays. They're hard to get. Yeah, we become, see what Clemson. And, and it's become such a guard oriented game too. Go ahead. You saw what Clemson was able to do with, with three bigs. They had three bigs that were really good. Yeah. Chef, PJ Hall, and uh RJ, the 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 dad the one that had the dad that was a football player. All three of those guys were all under six eight, but such physical specimens, especially RJ. Goodness gracious. What a bulldozer he was. Yeah. Earth Ether, thank you for that comment. Um Reminding everybody where to go see those highlights. Appreciate you doing that, typing it in the in the chat room. Um, Paul, is there anything else you want to talk about, man? Uh, if you need to get off, you're going to go ahead. I'm going to stay around for a few more minutes. Well, I mean, I, I don't I need to. I just I'm running out of things to say. <laughs> to go honest. ahead, brother. I'll I'll talk in the comments for a little bit. You sure? Yeah. Okay. All right, man. Well, I appreciate you taking <clears> – <throat> appreciate you uh, holding the fort down. I no problem, man. Thanks no to everybody worries. for coming on. And, uh, yeah, Mo Wagee, I unfortunately, I got to cheer for my guy, DJ Burns, and the NC State. But uh, that guy's so fun to watch. But, yeah, Mo Wagee's going to the Final Four. I didn't even think about that. But great point. <laughs> but, anyway, I'm off here, guys. I'm going to let Paul hold the fort down the rest of the night. I'll, I'll watch you later, brother. All right, bro. What are you doing on realignment yet? Um, and what, what aspect are you talking about exactly, Kenny? Um, I, I don't uh, I don't know anything right off the top. I mean, there are, you know, there are always rumors. Uh you know, but you know, like the Miami thing. That was a that was really the last thing I read about. Which this is more up Coos's alley. But the Miami Hurricanes to the Big Twelve was like one of the biggest uh, rumors I've read recently. But really, I mean, I don't really do that as much as Coos does. I like it, but uh, <laughs> Pesanabo, he he was tall, but he was only like I think. He was under 6'10", uh, I believe, Shaggy. Uh, I don't have it right in front of me, but he may just seem taller if he were, if he were young. But, I mean, Sheway was probably as tall or taller than he was. Uh, I, I know Derek Culver was 6'11", uh, or six, maybe he was – it's hard to remember, you know, like what some of these guys height-wise was. Uh, I know we're missing somebody. We've had a couple bigger than that here lately. Lately, it's one of those things I'll go down the rabbit hole on. <laughs> Markets and Moto, thank you for that, Jimmy B. That's a good question, Josh. Uh, as far as look, I don't want to divulge too much, but. Just remember this. I, remember this. Ask yourself what happened at senior night this year when Bob Huggins walked Kirk Creese across the floor. If you don't know the answer to that, all the other players had to sit and watch and weren't allowed to walk on the same floor as Bob Huggins. Kirk Creese wore Bob Huggins' shirt around the practice facility the first few days. Uh and really loved Bob Huggins. And he came here because of Bob Huggins and his truck. So while I personally think Kirk can play here and would be great in the system, um, I, I think the powers that be probably won't allow it. You know, I don't have that. I don't have that in front of me to say. I don't have uh, inside knowledge on that really, but that's what my gut says. If he stays, I'll be happy. Hey, look, they got hot at the right time, Earth Ether. 
They really did. Uh, it happens, you know. Uh, <laughs> I wish it would happen to us, man, because they, I mean, you look at the talent level they have. We can achieve that. Maybe not this year, but, you know, in two, three years, I think we can build into something like that. I absolutely do, Leo. Absolutely, we, we can. Uh, we're going to have to, you know. We don't really have a choice. I mean, you can go guard-oriented in this league, but you'll get eaten alive. He did play with Tucker in high school, but he's more of a wing player than I can remember. Denny's was a big guy. I don't believe he was, though, Shaggy. Uh, he may have been listed there. Knock an inch off at least, you know. Um, you know, It's just like in football. Guys are never what their listed weight. It's like wrestling. Guys are never listed what their weight is. <laughs> Uh, I don't even know why we got on that subject. But I think we'll get some bigs, Earth. I really do. Guys, don't forget to the like button, uh, certainly. And if you're watching this after the fact, leave a comment down below. Let us know who your favorite transfer is this cycle. Let us know who you want to see West Virginia get. Who do you want to see in a West Virginia uniform? Uh, and, and what topic do you want to see us talk about next, guys? Is there something out there that, that you want, want to see us do a topic on? Because uh, certainly I would love to do that for you. We want to make you guys happy. We live to serve. <laughs> yeah, that's true, Kenny. Joe Alexander under B-line was a big. You're not talking about, or not Joe Alexander, but the other Joe. Early 70s, he was 7 1. Thanks, Rick. I try to make them every now and again, Shaggy. Uh, well, but I mean, I eat my fair share of crow, too. I think we all do. Yeah, I remember. He transferred. Um, he was a West Virginia kid, too, I think, Doug. Uh, talk about just a couple years ago. Jamie Small again. <laughs> there you go. That's a that's a name from the past. Correct, Curtis. He said. Leading a few more of those Drake players makes sense because of knowing the, knowing the system would make it an easy transition year or easier. Yeah, I agree. But then you look at like, well, NC State, you know, uh, teams like that. And there's two teams in the tournament that only had one player returning that are starting anyway from last year. So, and look, Iowa State, they did what we did this year and went to the Sweet 16 with the very next year, right? So in this day and age, it can happen, guys. You just have to know what fits your system best and, you know, recruit to it, obviously. And, and then really, I, I don't expect Coach DeBreeze to get it exactly right the first year in the Big 12, guys. We may not even make the tournament the very first year. It's very possible. Although that would be the first time for him uh, in a while. So. Uh, sorry. Some, my mom just messaged me and said somebody was trying to get a hold of me. But um, at the end of the day, I, I just. I'm excited to see the new Brandon Ball in Morgantown. You know, I think we're going to win some games, but. I have to remain until we get some players in. I'm going to hold back on the enthusiasm. I have to, man. We got another W fan in here with spitting some knowledge. We had this guy named Fred Chenowitz who played from 1915 to 1917 and was five six. 
Wonder if he has anything to do with Jenna with Ford and Clarksburg. What an ADD thing to say. <laughs> what a random thought. I love it. Those are the kind of thoughts I have. Yeah, I saw that. But they decided to go ahead and go with it because at the end of the day, they both had to play it one half with that three-point line like it was, correct? So uh, I, I think that's probably partially what was going on there. Uh, trying to trying to think about that. Not off the top of my head because the 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 deal was is no because it was a one year thing with Josh guys. I mean they were still working for next year. Don't get me wrong. Look at Jeremiah Bedbury. Uh and players like that to me that were really questionable. No offense to Jeremiah Bedbury, but there were better players out there that we could have brought in. Um, that said. I think Bembry's got a chance to be good someday. But I, I think, you know, this was such a vacuum. This was all in a vacuum in all one year. I just don't think they were recruiting high school yet, guys, because they wanted to see whether or not they were going to stay. So um, kind of a kind of a weird high school year for us, really. I, I know uh, the the Carmelo kid is really excited about the hire. In plans on staying uh, on with West Virginia, so I, at least we have that to be excited about. You know, I I, I think Cody, he's going to be a good player, so we're lucky for that. <laughs> Chenna with guy was probably the center at five six back then. You guys are silly. You guys are silly. Um. Uh, one other thing I was going to bring up before I jump off here for the evening, I just wanted to make sure you guys were didn't have any extra questions or anything like that because Coos almost didn't do the video. He just wasn't feeling well, which I understand. Uh, this whole Tucker DeVries situation is going to be interesting because if you go look at the Iowa State transfer, Omaha, uh, However, Bill, you, however he says his last name. Tucker DeVries is following him, and then my sources tell me that they're close, or at least buddies, and, and he's definitely actively recruiting him. And he's not the only one. Obviously, there is the, uh, the former Drake players uh, that he's also still recruiting. Could Tucker DeVries turn into year this year's Jose Perez? Uh, it's possible, right? So... Uh, and here's another thing about the Drake players, guys. They have a 30-day window to transfer, right? That means if we get them guys, especially because we need guys like, you know how the NCAA likes to mess with us. We need guys that can't be suspended, that they can't make us go to court to have to try to get them. None of that because it feels like every time we turn around, they're coming after us. So I really feel like those direct, some of the some of the Drake players would be great, like somebody else was saying, because they've got free thirty days to do whatever they want. You know, can't nobody do nothing about it. Their coach left. Thanks for the comment, Josh. Who do you think stays player wise? And who? It's moving on me. Who do you think who do you think stays player wise and who goes? Do you put much thought into who showed up to the press conference? Who didn't? I think you have to. Also realizing that it's spring break, Josh. Uh, remember what I said about Kirk Creasa earlier and the Bob Huggins the thing about him walking him across the floor, and they didn't let the other seniors walk because of that. You know, it was like basically. The, the regime was saying, hey, we don't agree with this, and this is how we're going to protest it. So being that he and Bugs are so close, you have to think it's unlikely Kerr returns. But it's possible. You know, maybe Coach DeVries really wants him to make an exception. Ali Ragab probably is not staying. 
unless he's a walk on only. He's not getting a scholarship. I, I'm sorry to say that. I'm sure he's a great kid. He showed up to the press conference. He looked like he was a really great kid. I, I, I hate the dog bad. But the reality is, is he's not a power five starter or backup. You know, he, he's a guy you play in practice against. Uh, and it's unfortunate. But if you go watch any highlight of him, it would be really, uh, you know, it'll be, he, he wouldn't even play at the, at the mid-major level, guys. I'm being serious. He's like, they really did just bring him in for, for Jesse to bang on. So I don't want to go in on him too much more because I feel bad. But um, so I think, you know, he may stick around. Patty Sue is a guy, Pat Tuminick, who I really want to stay. Uh, but I think he'll have options elsewhere. I think he put good film on tape where he might be able to get another spot at a power five. Or if he wants to go to mid-major route, he would start every game in the mid-major. He'd be great there. I really do believe that. But I think he's really improved. He was probably the most improved player last year, really. So I think he's got a shot to stay. Uh, obviously, Jeremiah Bibbery is probably going to stay. Uh, he's already transferred once. Uh and it seems like he's happy with the hire. He's got enough upside to where I think Coach DeVries might keep it. Um, who am I missing here? That obviously Kobe is probably going to stay, but or I mean go. He he and Seth are supposedly best friends, but he's a good defender. So could Coach DeVries talk him into staying? Yes, I think it's possible. Um. I would love to see that happen. I think Kobe could offer something as a backup point guard this year. But if he thinks he can play in the league, maybe he needs to move on. So, I mean, I'm just giving you scenarios here. If you're at hold my feet to the fire, I'm going to say probably Jeremiah Bembry. Uh, basically, the guys who are at the press conference, <laughs> you know, but but I think there is a chance for others to stay. So Slezinski's gone, obviously. Slezinski, but he needs a waiver, medical waiver anyway. So it's not even for sure he's going to get to play wherever he goes. Uh, so, I mean, there's just a lot in, that goes into it. Uh, and if the, if the player has a connection to Huggins, go ahead and subtract, subtract five off of that right off the bat. You know, so just remember that. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. I would listen. I would sprint to the nearest university that gave me a job as a video coordinator. Believe that. Oh yeah, Noah. Thank you, Kenny. Uh, Noah is the other guy I would really love to see stay. I think he could really, really, he would do well in this uh, scheme. But based on how we're recruiting, it's it makes me wonder. You know, the kind of guys we're recruiting are kind of like the guys that Noah is. So it's kind of scary to think of what exactly that could be. You know, like, I, I really do believe Noah could play in the system, but he can go somewhere else if he wants to. But I think he, based off of how this year went, I don't know if Noah would be able to go to the Power Five and, and demand playing time. He'd be able to go. He would have options. Uh, as he, I mean, he might have to move back down. Does he want to do that? I just think, you know, if Noah could stay, this would be a really good opportunity for him to show out this year. I really believe that. Chaz, I think we are, but he's got a lot of suitors, a lot. So the fact that we offered Toby O'Connor today tells me that, you know, I mean, we could have more than one big wing, don't get me wrong. But if Overton was coming on board, it seems like we would have heard something about it by now. Uh, that mean it won't happen. Maybe maybe it's just assumed that he will. And that's why we haven't heard. Um, let's give it until next week and see what plays out. If we don't hear anything about Overton uh, coming next week, then I'm going to assume he's going elsewhere. And that also goes for the other player, too. Uh, uh, gosh, his name slipped my mind all of a sudden. But yeah, the the main the main three guys obviously you had Tucker, you had Overton, and you had the other guard that everybody likes. You know, I think the you know 
those are the main three guys that everybody wants. And we got one of them. But now, I think he's recruiting the other two, others on the team. And you have Connor Enright. Uh, you've got a few players. I mean, there, like, there are literally five players off Drake that can come along. I don't know if that's too many, but time will tell. Yes, Quinn is probably gone, in my, from what I've been told. He he has a he needs a medical red shirt. He doesn't fit what DeVries does defensively. He does offensively, but as a big, he he just doesn't really fit. You know, he can't really handle the ball very well, and he doesn't rebound. He doesn't play defense. All he is is an offensive threat. So I, I don't. From what I've been told, he doesn't fit what DeVries does. I mean, could he get in the weight room and add 25 or 30 pounds and be that guy? Absolutely, if he wanted it, but I don't see it. JoJo is probably staying. Uh, JoJo loves West Virginia. He's a good defender. He's not great at anything, but he's good at everything. That's what I like to say about JoJo. He's a good defender. He can score it. He can rebound it. So like he's the guy that averages like six points, six rebounds, uh, and plays pretty good defense, right? And then there's always a chance that he can take a jump. So uh, that would be nice because we need him to do something like that. But, uh, you know, got to love JoJo. I think he'd be a great backup for us. Uh, certainly not a starter. Thanks, here. Appreciate that. Uh, as always, two guys, we have 180 people in here, so if you want your voice to be heard, we, we try to say this once or twice a show. Don't be afraid to send a Super Chat uh, our way. It helps the show. This is what I do full-time. I do not have another job for a lot of reasons, um, but mostly because I do do well enough to survive doing this. Uh, is it probably what most people would be happy with? I doubt it. So, you know, I do bring it up <laughs> uh, only because, you know, it's my full-time job. So, um, appreciate, appreciate you guys for showing up so deep again. We've been having really good chats here lately. We've had, you know, we had three, four hundred in there the other day. Uh, I think it's after the debris hire. Um, but we've, we've struck right back with good content. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, guys. Please hit that subscribe button. If you want to look back the last couple of days, we've had former director of player personnel, Jay Coots, on, which was a great talk. A lot of inside info in that conversation. He even threw exact dollar amounts out of what we paid for certain players. Go back and check that out. And then Jared DeVries, the brother of new West Virginia head coach, Tucker DeVries. Tucker DeVries. Uh, Darren DeVries. Uh, who played in Jared played 12 years in the NFL for one team, the Detroit Lions. Uh, and, and he was a really cool interview. Uh, he's, he's in my phone now. I get to text him. Uh, he's a super cool guy. So uh, if you, if you like a West Virginia content channel or a show that has a couple fans that just also happen to be plugged in, this is your stop. Uh, I, I've got play. I mean, I talk to the players, I talk to the coaches, you know, and I'm not trying to brag. I'm just saying this is what you get, right? It, you know, I've worked really hard to get there. So if you want somebody that talks to players, coaches, and the like that uh, doesn't have a paywall up and just asks for help every now and again, this is your stop, right? So just want to sell myself a little bit if you're new around here. I would say so. He was the top top ranked player in Tennessee last I checked, uh, Curtis. So um, he's a good player. You know, he, he's very little. He's 160. So he's got to put some weight on. But uh, I would imagine that, you know, it, I don't know if West Virginia is for sure interested. Sharon Young is a guy I would be interested in, though, if I was the reason now. Absolutely. <clears throat> That's just me, though.
Josh, in the last few years, W has been out hustled, not muscled. You need to get back to working teams and getting more physical inside of the glass. I think that's going to happen. Uh, it has to happen in the Big 12. But we've got to have the personnel to do it, Josh. So let's see, like I said, let's see what happens in the next two weeks in the portal. We'll update you every single step of the way here. Uh, as soon as something happens, we'll break and go live with it. So just keep an eye on Hoops from the Hills. There is a, a bell you can turn on to get notifications anytime we go live or anytime we post something. Please, please turn that on, guys. That way you know when we go live. There's 172 of you in here right now. You know, if 100 of you that don't have the bell rung, do it now. You'll know when breaking news happens and you'll be able to come here. We get it quick, you know. A lot of times I get it five or ten minutes before it actually goes live. So not every time, but and that includes football too. Also, guys, if you look down here on the scrolling on the bottom, uh, both of our social medias on X, I am at Paul Mountaineer. He's at Coos206. Check us out there too. You can interact with me directly if you have questions there. I answer almost every inbox that I get. Um, you might have to 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 type at me and tweet at me to, to get me to accept your follow so that we can inbox. But generally speaking, guys, I, I try to uh, answer all those. He is committed to Akron for sure, but that I mean, he he listen. West Virginia offered him. But it was the last regime. It was there was it was stacked. Remember the roster back like you know this time last year. So no, no, I don't. Uh, so I think there's a shot with this new regime. But are they even interested? Is it too late? Those are all good questions. And like we said earlier, uh, WV fan one twenty nine. In this day and age, you can go play one year to Akron and transfer, right? So maybe Coach DeVries gets him next round. I, I don't know. We'll have to check it out and see. Be interesting. I'd love to know. All right, guys. I think I'm, I've talked out now. I just had a couple other things I wanted to get to. Don't forget to like the video. Hey, and if like 20 of you guys can click the copy link or share button and share this to X or YouTube for me, Man, that would be more than money to me. Seriously, we need to grow the show. Uh, and it's just hard to do because we're West Virginia only here. Uh, and, and without going to other teams, we're, I'm going to have to consider it because we can't be stuck at like 1,500, guys. You know, like we're growing two or three subscribers at a time, but it's slow going. We kind of hit a little plateau here because there's only so many West Virginia fans that like basketball, right? So. If you could share it out for us, man, it'd be a lot. I, I try not to ask for this stuff all the time, but um, try to get us a couple more fans in here, y'all. It'd be better for everybody all the way around. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for showing up. Thanks for supporting me and Coos, and, and wish him get well, like you said. Hope you're having a great Easter wherever you're at with your family. I wish you all the best. I I don't think so. I truly I really do think they're going to dominate whoever they play here from here out. I, I do. All right, guys, I'm out. Uh, have a great Easter rest of your weekend, and, and we'll see you next time the news breaks. My name is Mountaineer Paul. Talk to you later.